Yes, folks, the recording is now in progress. And here we are again in another fun Sunday fun day in the Mermaid Lounge, where tonight we are talking about James O'Keefe once again. And, you know, I know how hot takes are, and I know how social media is, but this is not social media. So let me say this right now. The latest to do with Mr. O'Keefe and his project Unveritas is the stealing of Ashley Biden's uh, diary. Now, we're not going to talk about that in detail tonight because we don't have any detail. Uh, and we will refrain from talking about that in detail. Uh, there are plenty of other things to talk about, and we will revisit the um, diary issue um, when we get more information on it. Right now, there's very little to go on. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Dave, except let me just say one thing. <laughs> if he did steal her diary, that's not what journalists do, okay? That's an invasion of fucking privacy. Right. Uh, before I get into it, as as we as we said, um, we're not really going to get into the whole Ashley Biden uh, diary thing. I do have a story from Mike Schmidt, also an interview from Rachel Maddow of him in regards to it. it the details are very sketchy that in regards to you know how Veritas got involved, how James O'Keefe got involved, who took it, who gave it to him, what they did, all that nonsense. We're we're reserving the right to come back to it when we know more. Just like I reserved the right uh, to hold off on uh, Burisma until I knew more about it, and I'm glad I did that. So. With that being said, and by the way, we're we're we say this over and over again. We're not journalists, and this is very much opinion. A lot of this is 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 opinion, and is based on stuff that we've collected. And by the way, most of this uh, presentation will be from James O'Keefe's own website. So I don't want to hear that he misrepresented himself or whatever nonsense. <laughs> so <laughs> now further ado, the very first thing that I want to talk about is this is from the International Federation of Journalists. This is the jo Global Charter of Ethics for Journalists that was created in 1954 and amended in 1986. And this is based on something that was called the Bordeaux Declaration. This is an international journalistic ethics list, just so you know. Um, and I'm going to run through uh, some of this, starting with the preamble. The right of everyone to have access of information and ideas reiterated in Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which we have talked about in the past, underpins the journalist's mission. The journalist's responsibility towards the public takes precedent over any other responsibility, in particular towards their employers and the public authorities. Journalism is a profession which requires time resources and the means to practice all of which are essential to its independence the international declaration specifies the guidelines of conduct for journalists in the research editing transmission dissemination and commentary of news and information in the description of events in any media whatsoever i'm going to list some of these and specifically number four <laughs> and argue that Project Veritas is not a journalistic operation. It's not. It's respect not for the right. number one. Respect for the facts and for the right of the public truth uh, is the first duty of the journalist. As a matter of fact, Marty Baron, who is an award-winning journalist in his own right, and you know, editor in chief, who was recently uh, retired. He calls Project Veritas 
a de-verification outfit when journalism is is in its essence a process of verification and he says they're not journalists so in pursuance of this duty the journalist shall at all times defend the principles of freedom and the honest collection and publication of news which does not mean going undercover and talking to people giving people a story like i'm you know i'm with my girlfriend who's a prostitute going to acorn and of the right of fair comment and criticism he she will make sure to clearly distinguish factual information from commentary and criticism and or opinion in my in my opinion a lot of what i see from project veritas is opinion a lot of the stuff that has been posted in terms of film or recordings or a pen, people's opinions. I mean, you can roll opinion into commentary. I mean, that could be considered commentary. Right. You know, I, I don't think I don't think this is an international piece. I'm not sure people use opinion as a word so much in other parts of the world besides the United States. I they think they I see a lot of commentary. So right. I think they're interchangeable in that respect. But yes, I yeah. do agree with you. Yeah. In the United States, I would say opinion. That's uh, to me, that's the word. Right. Uh, the journalist shall use only fair methods to obtain information, images, documents, and data. And he or she will always report his her status as a journalist and will refrain from using hidden recordings of images and sounds, except where it is impossible for him, her to collect information that is overwhelmingly in the public interest. He, she will demand free access to all sources of information and the right to freely investigate all facts of public interest. How many times have you heard, if you follow Project Veritas, James O'Keefe and his um, Mary, Band. Whatever, Mary Band of insurgents, whatever you want to call them, which we'll get into, how many times have you heard that they tape someone without their knowledge or, or or whatever right over and over and over again the notion of urgency or immediacy in the dissemination or information shall not take precedence over the verification of facts sources and or the offer of a reply is <laughs> the here's a couple others um the journalist shall do the utmost to rectify any errors or published information which is to be found in inaccurate in a timely, explicit, complete, and transparent manner. <laughs> it's very rare that uh, that he that James O'Keefe actually admits an actual error, and he in. In my opinion, with his retracto board, his wall of shame, he considers people who make a slight error and correct that slight error a weakness. Right. And he exploits it. The journalist shall observe professional secrecy regarding the source of information it obtained in confidence. The journalist will respect privacy. He shall respect the dignity of the persons named and or represented and inform the interviewee whether the conversation and other material is intended for publication. He, she shall show particular consideration to inexperienced and vulnerable in interviewees. And once again, he exploits them. The individual, which I will get to, from Acorn, who went along with their their line of questioning and then immediately called the police, and then uh, suffered some financial loss because of it, and sued James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. They settled for a hundred thousand dollars, which his lawyer, uh, James O'Keefe's lawyer, called a frivolous lawsuit. So. And there are a few more here, and I will leave this list up, but I just want, I, I 
I just want people to realize that journalism is a profession and there are rules to it. Can you, can you go down to uh, just, I thought there was one more that I thought was, hold up, back up a little bit, more towards 10. 10? Hold on. Oh, the nine? Yeah, that's an important one, I think. Journalists shall ensure that the dissemination of information or opinion does not contribute to hatred or prejudice and shall not and shall do their utmost to avoid facilitating the spread of discrimination on grounds such as geographical, social or ethnic uh, origin, race, gender, sexual orientation, language, religion, disability, political and other opinions. And in all honesty, again, I, I know I keep going back to his original sting. Uh, Acorn seemed to hit specific uh, stereotypes yeah. of the poor community. And, and honestly, um, not just James O'Keefe, although he's done a lot of it, um, has brought a lot of unfounded hatred um, to Antifa, right. Black Lives Matter, by just flat out fucking lying. Right. So. So I am going to go straight to the Project Veritas website and give you a tour. Uh, there are a couple of things that I want to say right off the bat, he is big into uh, recruiting. He's always hiring. He's always asking for money. You know, he's always looking for vigilant, you know, warriors or whatever of truth. Um, Project Veritas actively seeking an executive director. I eat dirt. Right. <laughs> and he constantly talks about whistleblowers. Okay. We have a Pfizer whistleblower. And hold on. All of this, all of this is in regards to a couple of emails, by the way. Right. It's a couple of emails, a couple of potential pieces of uh, potential artifacts, potential pieces of um, evidence. But I'll, I'll read the title. Whistleblower goes on record, reveals internal e emails from chief scientific officer and senior world uh, director of worldwide research discussing COVID vaccine. We want to avoid having the information of fetal cells floating out there. Right. And let me just explain something to you. So you understand this. The use of fetal cells has been going on for a while now. Um, that is not hidden, by the way. Um, it is out there on many medical websites. It's out there on the CDC website. What they don't want to do is advertise it because of the fucking right wing negative response to it and the way it is blown out of proportion. So let me explain a little bit about what they are, unless you want to go first and I can come in afterwards. No, go ahead. Well, can you put up the other page then? Which one? The, the one, one on the doctor, the one with the doctor talking about the use of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk Good about this fetal cell thing. Because what when they talk about this and they amplify this story, they make it seem like we're having abortions right now so we can collect the fetal cells to use in scientific research. Where is it? Crap. Is it over here? Oh, it's over here. Sorry. There right. it is. So this article came from University of Nebraska Medicine, um, and it talks about where fetal cells were used in the process of developing... COVID-19, the fetal cells used were used in the research done on mRNA vaccines in general. Um, and the fetal cells were 
basically, um, the cell lines used were basically cell lines grown in a lab based on aborted fetal cells collected generations ago. We're talking about the 70s now. Um, so abortions happen. By the way, um, a woman is um, allowed under law to have an abortion through her first trimester. It's not an illegal process and the use of fetal cells is not an illegal process. So what we have here is a piece written by, by the way, um, this doctor that wrote this is a practicing Catholic as well. Um, and bottom line is they used it in the research of mRNA vaccines and they were used in the research on the Johnson & Johnson single shot COVID vaccine. Right, and it's right here. Yep. They used in research. They are not part of the, they're not being injected into you. They're used in the research. There are some things on the planet that require um, hosts that are not, you know, something you can substitute something else for. All right. It's like using animals in medical research. There are just some things you do where you can't avoid doing it. So, um, and as I said, the, 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 I mean, everybody's sitting up like this is something fucking new, like using animals is like something fucking new. Like we may be using aborted fetal cells from 10 decades ago or whatever, decades ago to do research. This, none of this is new. It's just, amplified now it's time to amplify everything because of oh COVID-19 right it's amazing <laughs> everything is a leak and everyone is a whistleblower by the way the word whistleblower um insinuates that someone has already found something that has been deemed to be very important right. and has blown the lid off of something uh this didn't blow the lid off anything. The other thing that I wanted to say is that whenever Project Veritas writes a story like this, it always, by the way, always comes back to them. There's his book, by the way, American Muckraker. Um, so here we go. The whistleblower who shared these emails with Project Veritas, Pfizer Manufacturing Quality Auditor Melissa Strickler, said she was not sure whether aborted fe fetal tissue made it to the final COVID vaccine product. Again, she wasn't sure. So what are we talking about? They're being so deceptive in their emails. Opinion. It's almost like it's in their final vaccine. Opinion. It made me not trust it. Opinion, she said. Strickler said that Project Veritas was the only place she could go to tell her story. Number one, opinion. Number two, an advertisement for Project Veritas. Number three, she may have been the only fucking place that would have done anything with this. Right. So, by the Not way, this, yeah. whistleblowers, we now have her on a Christian website yep. raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for herself. When we don't even know if she actually lost her job. By the way, that's not a whistleblower. Somebody making money off of something that they said? No, that's an opportunist. Right. Let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this. There is an official organization that deems who whistleblowers are. There's a national whistleblower website. And there are also criteria for that. I promise right. you she's not going to be on it. Right. Okay? <laughs> I promise you she's not going to be on it. We reuse, we use and redefine these terms at fucking will to fit whatever the fucking narrative is. We redefined journalism. We've redefined progressive. We've redefined whistleblower. What else would we like to redefine? We're redefining fucking science. What I'd like to say, too, is that right after uh, her gifts and go crowdfunding campaign was advertised with Project Veritas, of course, James O'Teeth has to right underneath that, right underneath her gifts and go uh, site, 
he raises money for his own <laughs> Project Veritas site. You know, it would be one thing if they said as a result of this, she has lost her job and has no money. It would be one thing. It's just, oh, look at what I did. Now come give me some dough. You know what? I'm, I'm so fucking annoyed at, at this bullshit. It just right. drives me insane. Here, here we go. This is the best news <laughs> on the whole fucking site right here. <laughs> Project Veritas. Okay. Veritas headquarters destroyed. So help yeah. us rebuild. You can spend up to $10,000. Yeah, send me some fucking money. Look at my apartment. I need to redo my bedroom. So it looks better on the videos. Should I what set up the GoFundMe site? Right. One of, oh, one of our... Uh, one thing I know for yeah. certain. Fucking Christians are stupid. I should go set up my site there. They'll give me money no matter what. One of our old friends. Oh, my cable's out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you can, oh, come on. so I can pay my cable bill. Right. Come on. Join the Ferritas First to Know Club. Again, that's that's creating a, an insider club. I've seen that with um, with Alex Jones. I've seen that with Steve Bannon. I've seen this with a lot of other. Yeah, uh, what's her name? Yeah. Auntie Tom there. What's her name there? Candace Owen. Yep. So here we go. Remember how we talked about, uh, you know, people holding themselves accountable and, and changing some, uh, you know, like not even retracting, but slightly correcting their mistakes. James O'Keefe's wall of shame. All of these people corrected them themselves and he created a whole wall of shame this is where media journalist reputations go to die uh, well first off he's not a journalist yeah well you know so there you go I'm enjoy still, i'm still reading all those i'm good and there's you know all the retractions um i almost went to uh to do that, to look at all the retractions, but you know what? I felt like I was going to feed the beast that way, so I decided not to do that. He has a big fight with the uh, Washington Post. I would assume, you know, part of it has to do with Marty Baron, then other people. Yeah, you know, so there we go. Um, the next part of this, it's his about page, an overview, James O'Keefe's bio. Uh, end of the year recap i'm not going to do any of that the media kit this is how you can become part of the group and and learn more and all that crap so there you go uh then you have top 10 lies about us one thing i'm going to say is that one thing one positive thing that o'keefe did not that he actually did anything good, but he he keeps reporters on their toes. There's there's minor things that they that they have said in the past about his you know what he has done. Not that he's done good things, but uh, like the Mary Landro incident where he misrepresented himself and and his crew. Uh, there were allegations that he wiretapped. He didn't. They didn't get that far, even if they, you know, that was part of their thing. He did, O'Keefe did say that he wanted to record people without their knowledge, but whatever. Um, why number one, Project Veritas has no credibility yeah. <laughs> or impact. Uh, number two, O'Keefe and Project Veritas deceptively edit tapes, Acorn and other examples. Yeah. So... You know, lie number three, just because you say something a lot is a lie doesn't make it. Right. Um, number th line number three, James O'Keefe did not present himself as a pimp and never wore the pimp outfit. So wait a minute. I mean, what really what who cares? I mean so they say that he's he, he, he's he says he's not deceptive, but then he says he, he poses a Come on. <laughs> can, can you see? Can I just think it? They want me to buy this guy as a journalist. Can you see Marty Baron putting a page up like this? 
Do you see any other journalist putting a page up like this on their website? No. No, come on. I mean, honest to God, he's like a fucking child. Now, James O'Keefe was guilty of and settled a lawsuit about misrepresenting, deceptively editing a video of San Diego acorn worker Juan Carlos Vera. This is the gentleman who won the $100,000. He settled in a lawsuit for invasion of privacy, not for deceptively editing or doctoring the footage. And that's true. He didn't do that. But what he did do is potentially damage someone's reputation, you know, unfairly. Line number five, James O'Keefe is a felon, broke into the office of bugged wiretapped or attempted to wiretap phones of U.S. Senator Mary Landrieu. He did not break into the office. He walked up to, you know, the the whatever, the desk or whatever. Um, and he also didn't uh, wiretap. So, so there's a but. He was, you know, what, recording people surreptitiously and he did misrepresent himself. Correct. So it goes on and goes on and goes on. Yeah, I could care less. It's a child. It's a oh, here we go. Line number 10. James O'Keefe and Project Veritas planted or attempted to plant a fake story in the Washington Post. They did. So what? how else would you characterize that? And they got caught. Right. So Project Veritas uses a variety of aliases to get meetings with people. <laughs> well, there's uh, a basic tenet of journalism right there that's violated. Right. Let people know you're a journalist. <laughs> right. Your information. So here's a couple other things I wanted to to mention on this part of it. Uh, settling acorn, oh, I'm sorry, mistakes that Project Veritas has made. Settling the lawsuit, the acorn lawsuit. They consider that a mistake. They consider it a nuisance lawsuit. Number two, pleading guilty to a misdemeanor. Made a mistake of pleading guilty because he didn't do anything, right? Yeah, Entry yeah, yeah. by false pretenses to enter to any real property vessel or aircraft in the United States security, blah, blah, blah. So number the next one, uh, four, improperly edited an NPR video. Again, taping a guy who works for NPR saying that he doesn't feel that uh, that uh NPR should be publicly funded. So what? How is that news? What's this? Again, this it's is an opinion. Am I right? 2021? NPR is still standing. Actual correction. This is an oops. He didn't put a red nose on himself and put himself on his own retractile board, by the way. Project Veritas said William Romero was not a U.S. citizen, but he actually was a U.S. citizen. Okay, so he actually admitted. So I can't say that he never admits to a mistake. But, but that's it's, weird. it's rare. It's just an oops. And by the way, I, I want to say that a lot of the news outlets that he uh, reports on, they do stories every single day, multiple stories every single day. Yeah, Judd Legum, who we we did something on a couple weeks ago, or the Washington Post, or or the New York Times, or the Daily Beast, or the Globe, whatever. They they do multiple stories every single day. You can't expect them not to make a mistake here or there and slight error and correct themselves. That's what verification and, and correction, that's what they do. So there's another thing. Project Veritas legal victories. At least seven, seven. Okay, and they're suing. Uh, they're suing the New York Times for libel right now. So they're at eight lawsuits, to the best best of my knowledge. So 
There's litigation in progress. Take a look at their litigation. That's the way real journalists operate. Get out of here. I'm not even clicking on that shit. I don't even want to look at it. Okay. I, I I'm not giving them anything. Right. Piece of shit. Right. You a lawyer? Or are you a journalist? Oh, oops, you're neither. Here's my here's my point. Just because you win a lawsuit doesn't mean you're right. Just because you win a lawsuit doesn't mean you're not a bottom feeder. Right. By the way, how many people think that OJ did it and he was found not guilty? Right. You know, I'm just saying. Okay, here we go. Another another thing. Insider profiles and becomes an insider. He is recruiting people again. I had I made such a mistake saying, you know, we should have all of these citizen journalists. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we all said that. Okay. There's one particular guy I want to focus on because it's kind of in my area of expertise. You know, I'm a I'm a rep, you know, and I work for the Postal Service. Richard Hopkins. I want to do a couple things on him. All right. So, uh, Richard Hopkins overheard uh, allegedly overheard a conversation by some supervisors talking about ballots and mentioning dates. I think it was like the fifth or the sixth. Um, and he he heard ballots on the third, ballots on the fourth. So immediately, what does he do? He thinks ballot fraud and backdating. Okay. So um, it, it's just... He made he made statements in in a recording. Actually, the the post actually has a link to a two and a half hour recording. I didn't listen to all of it, but I listened to about twenty minutes of it. And I'm like, oh my god! Um, first off, they were in the they were in his post office, and one of these one of these articles. And this might even be this one says that he he recorded inside his building his conversation with the inspector generals of Pennsylvania Southern Pennsylvania, which by the way is highly against the rules. It's a security breach. You're not supposed to do that. And what happens? It gets back to Project Veritas and they publish it thinking it's going to help them. I'll help him. It doesn't. He actually walked back the claim. And then the day after, he, he he says he never recanted, even though he's on he's on recording. It's amazing. Now, so he he goes, he he has that interview on the ninth. He is placed on emergency placement on the 10th and I believe it's because the postmaster in that building was given death rest not by him but as a result there, as a result um personally I would try I would desperately I would really try to get his job back I I thought that the discipline was faulty but here's here's another thing again whistleblower Really, whistleblower? Pennsylvania Postal Whistleblower raises $233,000 on crowdfunding after being uh, placed on emergency placement. It was uh, danger to self or others was the reason. I did see the discipline. Um, and oddly enough, it was posted by somebody on Twitter. I mentioned that... Uh, you should either redact his uh, employee identification number or uh, withdraw. He actually took the uh, he took the tweet down, and his tweet is actually in one of these stories. Um, so it, it's amazing that 
he he raised two hundred thirty three thousand after GoFundMe kicked him off. The reason that they kick him off of GoFundMe is that his union is trying to get him paid, and in order to get him, you know, if he he gets paid, he's going to get double dip. He's he's playing with fire here. Well, give send go. You know the Christians are always there. Yeah. That's always a place to go because they don't, you know, there's no, <laughs> there's no gatekeeping there. You know, right now the, the people who planned and carried out fucking January 6th to raising money on Give, Send, Go. Right. So here you go. The audio recording, which Hopkins himself made secretly and Salon had re reviewed. So this is a, a Salon story. Does not indicate that however which was the claim the claim that uh they backdated uh ballots yeah. okay so <laughs> hopkins repeatedly disavows any firsthand knowledge of misconduct by the postmaster saying instead that his allegation was largely an assumption an opinion drawn by drawn from pieces of a conversation he overheard heard amid the noise of a mail processing facility he was working at his case and overheard parts of a conversation my mind probably added the rest. I understand that, he said at another point. All it is is hearsay, and that's the worst part. Why? What the fuck up? I mean, <laughs> you know, whatever happened to fucking discretion? I just don't get it. I don't get right. it. I really don't. This is the USPS Inspector General finding no evidence of ballot fraud. Now, There's it no wasn't just ballot fraud anywhere in this right. country. Nowhere. It wasn't just Richard Hopkins. There were other people that, that did it. A lot of this is redacted, but it's obvious that some of this is him because of the areas that, that were involved. OK, then you can you can take a look at all of this information. But to call this guy to call Richard Hopkins a whistleblower, number one, and not to, after he, he redacts his own statement, not to take him off of this website. I mean, it just shows you that they do not take anything seriously in, in terms of, of uh, checking their sources, in my opinion. And I I know some of the you know some of the circumstances firsthand from working in in uh, different uh, post offices and working in a mail plant. And by the way, the heads here, the people down here. Let me just say one thing about these people, right yep, here. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna get down to the one guy. Right here we go. Yeah, well, it, well, we know who he is, right? Yep. We know who this guy is. This guy actually was at the January 6th insurrection. And yes, Chase Bank took down his bank account because he was involved in the January 6th insurrection. Okay. Okay. He's a proud boy. So and the, the claim is they took they took it down simply because he was a proud boy and a right winger. Ah. Don't make that assumption. Can you go back just to the Facebook people? I just want you to know where you can find these Facebook people here now. Ryan Hopkins Ryan. and yep. these two clowns. You yep. can find them on the uh, United Medical Freedom Super website. Just so you know that. They're also now COVID anti-vaxxing nitwits, as you might right. guess. Now... Would you like to be on the inside? You can contact us today. Again, become one of us. Become an insurgent. Blah 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 blah. Okay, here we go. Hold on. I need to, I need to introduce this <laughs> properly. Yeah. Introducing James O'Keefe. There we go. I mean, really. <laughs> 
I just can't. I can't take these guys seriously. But finally, lot, that's just, that's the that's depressing. Finally, you can buy some of this shit. Would you like a five hundred dollar uh, Project Veritas leather jacket? I wouldn't. How about a varsity jacket? That's only four hundred. Oh well, there you go. For those poor, those of us poor elitists, right. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Dead Twitter bird. Here's Retracto. You can buy an the, alpaca for fifty bucks. I just, <laughs> I, I just can't. Wait, hold on. Coming soon is the Project Veritas <laughs> sneakers. So you can walk the beat. You you know you have your cell phone and you're you're you know you're taping these guys. Catch those. If those are Sperry topsiders, I'll never buy another pair. Never. <laughs> never again will I buy another pair. I just bought a pair at the beginning of the summer. Never again. I'll find some. So, one other thing that I want to that I want to show. And by the way, there's there's a lot of stuff in here. You know, I I promised the Judd Legum. Uh, response. It's in here. There's there's other stories in here. Feel free to take a look at everything. Right, but, to you, folks, but we're not going to sit and read to you all night. I do want to show this. This is the way you combat people like this. I love Columbia Journalism School. I do. Columbia Journalism Dean turns the cameras on James O'Keefe. It's right here. <laughs> James O'Keefe has, you know, like comes right into the, the to his office or whatever. I'm sure he has he has a team in there, and the journalism professor whips out his cell phone and starts <laughs> and starts taping him. A Mike wielding James O'Keefe apparently tried to ambush interview. Uh, Columbia Journalism Dean Shri, Shri, Shri Niz, Nivazan, uh, who promptly seemed to turn the tables on the conservative prankster, not journalist, asking him questions about his choice of costumes for his stunts. This is Eric Hayden. I got to check out some of his stuff. Um, a Mike wielding James O'Keefe tried to ambush this uh, this <laughs> journalism dean. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is great. Uh, <laughs> after he was done with me, I should have kept rolling because they got to the exit and they couldn't they couldn't open it. He says, hey, did you lock us in? Turns out they were pulling the door instead of pushing it. I love that shit. I love that. That's great. It's absolutely great. There's a couple other things in here. There's Will Summer, who writes for The Hill. He uh, has a list of different things that he's done over over the years. You know, just uh, stuff like that. This is um, an insider story about the Washington Post uh, sting. By the way, I don't know how else you would uh, you would characterize this story and. Other than you know, misrepresenting yourself. Well, that's how we get a story. Does everything. That's most right. of how he does everything. So, uh, um, this, this is something else that they actually had in there. Oh, that was the uh, hot mic, uh, hot mic take where Amy Robach, who works for ABC News. Sells her opinion, thinking that uh, Jeffrey Epstein was killed and he didn't kill himself. That is not news, right? Okay, Jeffrey Epstein. Or I'm sorry, uh, James O'Keefe made a big deal out of this, saying that ABC withheld a story. No, they didn't. That's an opinion. It's, it's, there's a difference between opinion and fact, right? There are no, you there's have, no. In order to post, in order to prove, in order to say Jeffrey Epstein was murdered, you would have to have some kind of information. You would have well, to have a video. A feeling. 
a video, forensic evidence, something. Correct. Or, or someone came forward. Right. Whatever. You know. Uh, so I do want to say something about this too, in regards to the um, to the recent. Stuff, by the way, in the Veritas uh, website, the very first thing you can go, you can check that. I also put the New York Times article in there so you could check his uh, recanting of it as well. And the diary was not the only thing that was taken. It is something that, you know, is being highlighted right this second, but it's not the only thing. And we don't know what else was stolen or taken. Right. We don't know anything yet. Not yet. And it takes time as, as the, you know, as those journalism ethics say, we, journalists have to be given the time to suss out the details of these things. By the way, so everyone understands this current investigation into Project Veritas as part and all this has nothing to do with the Biden administration. This investigation was started by William Barr when Donald yep. Trump was president. Yeah. Just so everyone understands, this is a part of the investigation of Barr's Department of Justice. It is was an ongoing thing already. So right. Oh, and, and one more one more thing, just to go back to the Postal Service thing for one second. This idea that this is about Democrats. Uh, trying to use the Postal Service to to um, suppress votes. Remember that during this whole thing, this is when Louis DeJoy first got in and he started trashing uh, mail processing machines and he started taking um, collection boxes out wholesale, ripping them out of the ground. You know, right before uh, just a couple of months or three or four months before the election. So I don't want to hear that nonsense. OK, uh, I'm not saying that the Republicans were doing that either. I don't know what the hell, you know, I personally, you know how I feel about it. But it a lot of this doesn't have to do with the election. But of course, you're going to have these guys use whatever they can to to smear the other side. Because they're warriors. Let me just let me just let me just say yeah. that we already know that uh, there's a whole host of bills being passed to suppress votes before the 2020 right. midterms. So right. you know we all we all know what's going on there, and those those are being passed in Republican states. Right. So, One one thing that I didn't really go into, I, we could if you want to, but I don't even think it's worth it, uh, is um, James O'Keefe's um, standards and ethics. You know, remember that list? Yeah, let's not. Yeah, no. I, I mean, you know, we are the tip of the sword. You know, we have to go on, all that kind of. It's It's just a bunch of. It's Bullshit. like watching Elizabeth Holmes raise money for Theranos. Really, it is what it was like reading that was like, you know, watching Elizabeth Holmes, you know, pep talk her employees. If anybody saw the documentary on her, you know, it's the same kind of jogging. So right. and it's in there. You can you can go in there. You can take a look. You know, again, we're not going to read everything, but. Trust me, it's a, it's in there, <laughs> and uh, it's just it's just this big to me. It wasn't a journalistic out, outfit. It's just something that is recruiting people to just continue this thing. It's a business. It's like mining mining for information that isn't even there. They're creating their own news. Yeah, that's what. And they again. James O'Keefe, I'm stating an opinion. Just, just for you, James O'Keefe, I'm stating an opinion. So I can do that. I, I'm exercising my First Amendment right to say you're a fucking hack. So I'm just saying, that's my opinion. Not that I mean anything. You know, go ahead, put a red nose on me, whatever. I, I'm a nobody. Hopefully enough nobodies will stop watching you. Yeah. 
So hopefully that's the last one we're, of this we're going to have to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to clear my head. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kill this recording. Yep. Bye-bye. I'm going to kill the recording, and then we can stay here and see what we're doing next.